All of this took place when I was between 18 and 19 years old. I'm currently 24 years old, and this happened between 2017 and 2018. My name is Becky. As of the brief backstory, all of this took place shortly after I finished high school. I didn't have any plans to go to college or university. Another thing is I should mention as a small detail is that before the, I finished high school, I actually had a boyfriend, but I found out that he was cheating on me or with another girl, so I broke up, I broke up with him, and he didn't even care. So I thought maybe I wasn't really much important to him. But after I finished high school, I actually stayed behind in my, my hometown, continued to go work to, at my at my work of at Walmart. Yeah, I know that many prefer didn't want to go there as a work, but when you're a teenager and there are so much any potential jobs opportunities, but I actually choose Walmart and it's actually a good place for me though. And I'm still working there as even though it's not perhaps not even relevant. But during this time I was a little bit lonely. And my best friend, Miranda, same age, she was actually a little bit concerned for me since my ex-boyfriend never actually was considering a good guy. So she thought, why not I try some online dating or something? Because it had been a really, com really very common and a popularity by now. And I was like, yeah, probably I could try it at least, but I didn't know exactly which site to be using. There are several like Tinder, um, Plenty of Fish and all that kind of stuff. So after I've thought about it, I choose one. And I'm not referring to being mentioned exactly the name since it's not that re relevant to the story anyways. But I was, I made a profile and I was hoping to find a match, I made a brief, I made a small brief bio about myself, I'm 18, and what my interests are, and um, sure, I did match with some guys, but some were having this, well, pick up lines, like hoping to get scored, maybe get me in bed, all that stuff, but I'm not that type of girl, to be honest, and, and, after missing a few of those guys, I put in my bio, I'm not looking for any hookups or one night stand, only a potential long-term relationship. But still, it happened from time to time, I did actually handle those guys as common to me. After nearly about a month after high school was over, and I, and I had been using this for about, you know, a month, I was giving hope, up hope, to find any guy to be in potentially as a boyfriend. But then, this older guy named Jake. He was 23 years old at the time, and I had not to be lying, but he was... I can't lie. I mean, this guy Jake was only a few years older than me, and he was such a good-looking guy. Blonde hair, blue eyes, very well fit trained, and he didn't make any pickup lines like the previous guys had done. He was actually very genuine. So we matched, and uh, for the next couple of days, we talked on the site first until we exchanged numbers, and it turned out he was a local and he was working as a mechanic. I was like, okay, this is something, a guy that I potentially could see a future with. After about almost a week of talking on the phone, we decided to meet up at the first, for just, for the first meeting in person. I choose a public space. So I choose this local cafe, and I arrived maybe just five minutes early. I was like, quite excited, but also a bit anxious anxious that what if this guy wasn't actually him on the phone 
or the, you know the photo what if he's actually is a a middle-aged guy that would have been a bummer though but as a senior the blonde hair blue-eyed guy walked in and it was actually him he saw me and he walked up to me and sat down and we started talking we ordered some snacks there and just we actually have a decent conversation I learned more about him. He is a, a self-employed mechanic and he had taken over his dad's workshop after he retired and all that stuff. And we actually just start to, he then asked me out on a date and I said yes. And we decided to be going to the movies. And long story short, we start dating after a while, a couple of weeks or so. But we meant it, didn't make it official until we were maybe just one month in. Both my parents was actually happy that I have found someone. And when I mentioned this to Miranda the first time after my first meeting with him, she was over the moon. Because how would I even had known? She thought that I had hit this I that hit the home run with such amazing good looking guy. I mean, he was actually the most amazing at the most. I mean, he was perhaps even better than my, my high school ex-boyfriend. He was just very smart. Well, he did exercise from, from time to time as much as he could and has a, a well-paid on job. And I could not even be better. But after part, we had been dating for about maybe six months or so. We decided to move in in our own apartment. Even though my friends and my parents thought that was a little bit too early. Considering we had only been dating for six months. But my parents had always told me that it was probably some one day I, I had been looking for my own place. And since I was 18, I had a well-paid job. So I would actually finance support myself. So me and... and Jake found a small place at our own in town. It wasn't even that far from his job and my job. It was like in the middle of. And um, for the first few weeks after we moved in, things was like perfect. It was like we were in our early honeymoon suite state or in our honeymoon phase. But it was then a couple of things after. We had lived in our apartment for maybe just about a month when I started to see some a different side from Jake. When I didn't came home at a certain time when I was supposed to be home, if I was at at work or if I was out at doing some grocery shopping, he started to almost interrogate me as shortly as I stepped in by the door, asking me where I had been, where I was, why did I even answer my phone? I told him I had my phone in my pocket, but it wasn't in a silent mode or in, so, and he didn't believe me. He started accusing me for cheating on him with different guys. He even demanded to see if I have any conversation with any guys. And I told him I had deleted my, my, that dating app and my profile and all that. And... Even though each time when he looked my through my phone and he demanded that I disabled my password so that he could always be looking at it at any time. So not to make anything any worse, so I did. Even though I never brought this up to my friends, especially Miranda, one day when Miranda did show up for just for a visit, we were just sitting in, in the living room. She asked me how things been going between me and Jake. I told him I told her it was just going well. I mean it's normal. She asked if we had any fights. Well, it happens, I told her. But that's like normal I said. Any couple fights or argues. She nodded. But then I mentioned that he, he is a little bit strange. She looked at me a little bit surprised and asked exactly what I meant by it. Then I told her some details that for about a, for about a while now, she, he had been interrogating me every time when I was at either home or when I went right home a little bit later than I was supposed to. And she thought maybe that he was just a bit 
insecure or maybe a little bit jealous. I mean, could anyone blame me? You know, I was, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm slim, brunette, brown eyes. So, I mean, any guys often look at me or even talk to me. But another thing that when I did mention to, to Miranda, that Jake had been accused me of cheating about different guys and he forbade me to even talk to any guys at all. It, it, but mine is for those when I met at work since I had to. Even though he wasn't happy about it, but that was the only small compromise that he would actually allow me to do. And she was stunned. Maybe that he felt a little bit jealous because I was a pretty girl and I actually, I, I had to admit I was, well, accepted it as well. I mean, can, can anyone blame me though? I mean, I'm, I mean, as pretty I am. But then, after a while, she she was asked me to if I want to use when if I want to go to the bar nearby to just grab them to drink. And I was like, yeah, why not? Since Jake is supposed to be with some friends of his for the night, so so I decided I needed some girl time myself. So I went with her to the bar, and perhaps just maybe in half an hour later. My phone started blowing up with text message and voice call and voicemails, all from Jake. He didn't matter to know where I were and who I was when who I was with. I told him on the phone, like I'm at the bar nearby, and he got really freaked out and started accusing me for cheating. I told him I was with, I was with Miranda, but he didn't believe me. So I told him, well, if you don't believe me, just come by to see for yourself. And he did. And he said, so that I was actually with Miranda, he calmed down and apologized for freaking out because... And Miranda told him calmly that he can't just go around accusing me for cheating on him, even if I'm at home at early. Turned out that he took that as an offensive, but I, she, I told her... I told him she's only she's worried about myself as well, and that somehow worked. I told him I will be home in a little bit, and he actually walked out, walked home, and I stayed maybe at the bar for maybe another twenty minutes or so. So Miranda and I went back to my apartment. She decided to spend the night there, and well, after the next day. Jake actually asked me if I was really happy with him. I was like, yeah, why not? I mean, you will, despite of those things, I've been accused me from being a cheater or something like that. But otherwise than that, I don't see any wrong with this. But you really had to stop doing that. He apologized and you know, he said that he felt a little bit insecure, but now he can trust me as the fool. But things went even way further down that because only about a month later i actually been invited by my parents to go see my grandparents who lived in a state over for about a week and i told him that and he told me to have a good time and well just the, the day just only a day after we had arrived at my grandparents home he called me just to see how i have been doing, and I told them that I was doing, and was fine. I was just spending time with my grandparents, and and he told me that he loved me and hope I had a good time. I told him that I would call him a bit later since I'm actually playing some games with my grandmother, and he agreed. But that same evening, he called me to manage why I didn't call him back later, as I promised. Well, the thing is, I forgot about it since we were so focused in the game, and we start to, and my grandparents decided to, we want should go out eat for dinner, and I didn't bring my phone. I was really, well, still really hopeful that this could be a salvage relationship, but his strange behavior continued went downhill. 
until one day when I get home from work, I can maybe arrive just 10 minutes late. There was just like small delay in the traffic and he then accused me from being seen on demand for 10 minutes late. I was like, 10 minutes late because of what's what? Talking to on demand? Are you crazy? And as I went about to walk by him, he grabbed my arm and slapped my face twice hard and I was stunned. That was the actual first time he ever been physical at me like that. And I didn't take that kindly. I told him to screw off and I grabbed my phone in my purse and just ran out of the apartment and I was terrified. He yelled after me, come back, we need to talk. But I didn't listen. I ran and took my car and drove all the way to my parents' house. And in fact, when I did arrive, my mom could see my face was red of a, like if someone had slapped me and I told what happened. She freaked out. She told my dad and he told me to just call off my relationship with Jake immediately. I at first probably wouldn't, but after my seeing my parents so freaked out, I mean, even though my dad is a, like a big teddy bear, but he would not allow this kind of things happen to his only daughter. So, basically, I told Jake on the phone right there with my parents in front of him, in front of me, that Jake, he was crying and asked me to come back so we can talk. I told him, Jake, I'm not coming back. We are done. What? He screamed on the phone, almost confused. I'm breaking up with you, because you can just go around slapping me and you accuse me of not being cheating. But then he starts screaming, calling me some bad names I were not want to feel comfortable to saying. But he said, if I don't come back in this instant, he will come find me and stab me to death. Then my dad grabbed the phone and said, listen, young man, this is Jake's biggest father. If you don't back off. We will have the police arresting you for threatening my daughter's life. But Jake, he didn't care. He said, Oh yeah, I will stab all of you. All of the bunch of your family. You're all dead. He screamed loudly and hang out the phone. I blocked the number immediately. My mom stood there freaked out. But I told her, now this all this is over. But there was, but as if I knew. This was not even over for many reasons. But another thing is that I really needed it was to grab my things that was at my apartment. And luckily for me, I chose the right time when Jake was at work. I took my dad with me and we went to the apartment, grabbed a few things I actually have. And since the apartment was in Jake's name, and not mine, so I could leave the apartment at any time I wanted. I even left a note to St. Jake, quote, Jake, if you listen, if you find this, don't ever try to contact me ever again, because we are done. You scared me, and I thought that you could be the one that you could be in the future life of my, you know, my future, but after you did, after being accused of me and slapped me like that, you scared me, and I don't want to have any like one like you in my life. So please, so stay away from me and my family. And that same night, I actually heard someone banging at the front door. Luckily for my dad was still up, and he yelled, Leave my property, or I will call the 911 on you. And later in the morning, I found out it was Jake. Jake knew exactly where my parents lived. He showed up after I found out my note and all my things was gone. He did demanded that I, I would have to talk to him and then hoping to convince me to come back. But my dad told him to just leave or I would call, that he would call the 911 on him. That worked. After that, he just ran off, took his car and just took off. I didn't hear or seen Jake for couple of days, but Miranda told me that she has seen and actually, he actually approached her, telling her to ask me to convince me to come back 
because since she was my best friend, hoping that she will manage to convince me to come back to be with him. But she told him, there's no way I would let a psychopath to be with my best friend, so stay away from me, and if you don't, um, let's say you're, you will be being buried six feet below. But that was not like as a friend, but she's only said it as to try to scare him. But he did face him, but he just told me, or told her to tell me I should go back with him or else. I took that seriously. But since, but since he, there was no much that I could down, Despite I couldn't go to the police and report this, but it was nothing much I could have done. It was like it would be his word against my word, and even though I had two witnesses, uh, well actually three witnesses, when my parents were there, when he said on the phone, and what he told to my friend, but I were not taking that kindly. But suddenly, after all that, after he approached Miranda, he was gone. He still lived at that apartment and still had it job, but I didn't see or heard from him for quite a while afterwards. It had been a while since I actually had seen or heard from Jake. And in fact, I had put him behind me and tried to focus on my life. And during this time, I still had moved back to my parents' home just for to find another place. But after being a couple of weeks after the last time I even heard from him, I was getting ready to get ready to go to work. I found all my four tires has been slashed and my back window had been smashed and and my front window and there was a, a note it said you will come back or I will make it worse. I was freaked out. I ran inside, told my dad, who was awake, and locked my mom, showed them my car in the note. They were so freaked out, but my dad was beyond. He was fumous red in his face. But I told her there was nothing, we couldn't even prove it was actually him. Because we don't even have any camera system that's security cameras or even or any other witness in the area. So my dad actually... Even though he wanted to do something, he just said, I should probably go over there to kick his ass. But, but I told my dad not to do it because that will only backfire on him instead for the otherwise. So, but I convinced my parents to buy a security camera to have it pointed all around the house for the back and front and the side. And my dad did that the same day. And since my car's tires were slashed, I actually bought my mom's car since she was had. She could always take my dad's car since my dad was not working at the time. And I went to work and I told some of my coworkers what had been happening to my car. They were stunned. And even when I told Miranda later on, she was furious but also worried, hoping that this could have just been a one time occasion. But no. In fact, I started to be noticed, Jake. Uh, at the, my, um, at my workplace, and I was really surprised that they've been. But he never actually approached me. He he, he only stood in one of the aisles, pretending to, to be looking for a certain item, and. This happened like not only once or twice, but happened almost every single day in a week. And even though, then even he started, I started to notice him around in town. And this was not a small town either. This was probably a decent sized town that had probably like 40,000 people. And having him to see him following around, and I started to notice him driving by in my neighborhood from time to time. And one day, when I was out in town with Phil, my older brother, he was very much 
scared. He started being like my bodyguard, but I told him that he couldn't be used to being around me 24-7 because he had to be in his place, his job, his life. But he didn't care. Because when he's when I was with Phil, suddenly Jake noticed us and actually you used to be mentioning it. Jake has never actually met my brother at this point. Because he lived in a different town. But after he heard what happened to me or about Jake, he decided to come back living in our town again. So when he saw me had moved on with a different guy, he was furious. He walked up to me and told me how dare I been cheating on him because in his mind we were even still had it, we were still together, but there hasn't even been any relationship between us for, for weeks. I told him that and he freaked out and told me just go with him to his car so we can drive back to the apartment or live as a via plan to do. But I said no. Then he pulled out a pocket knife. Phil, who is actually just around the corner, when he saw that, he's like, dude, back off. And I should mention Phil is not like the skinny guy. He was even way bigger than Jake. My brother was like 6'7", and uh, he was... Uh, and Phil... He goes to the gym almost every single time that he can. But it didn't face Jake at all. He then put the knife towards my brother and said, Oh, I will cut this guy, your new boyfriend's balls off and stab him and make him feel like it. Somehow it didn't face Phil. And Phil walked one step further and said, Go ahead. See what you see if you can do it. But Jake, he didn't back off. He wasn't even scared at all. In fact, he stepped further and is about to stab him. But then Phil punched Jake in the throat, and which made him fall backwards and land on his back, gasping for air, and said, "How dare you!" You can't take my girlfriend from me. But then he... Then he slowly stood up and grabbed a knife and just walked to his car and drew off. I told Phil what he did was the most amazing thing because I didn't even expect him to do that. But he said, no one mess around with my baby sister. And after that, we went home told my parents what happened. They were now even beyond furious. Now that I was not only the target, but now my brother had been threatened by his life. Luckily though, because we were near a store which has security cameras, and we called the police. They went there, they, went, they viewed the cameras, the recordings, and they took a copy, but but they also made a report, but still, there was no audio, and the sense that the recording's quality wasn't that good, to be honest, but at least we have some evidence of what he claims if he would make a, a counter-statement of ours. And for the next couple of days, I didn't either see or heard from Jake at all, but Phil told me always been aware of presence anytime. But then suddenly, the, vandal the vandalisms at my car once again stood out to start once again. This time, my tires were slashed once again, the, but only the slashed tires in the, a in this, uh, as a note left in the world of tires with a knife stuck it and said, This is your final warning. Come back or I will take the next step by hurting your family. Gee. And it was a J, meaning Jake. We took the note, then handed over to police, and Jake was told by the police to stay away from me while they would have him arrested. It somehow scared him only for only a couple of days before, until he came back, and this time I was only me and my brother Phil at home. My parents was not at was out for a moment. 
but Phil, he was actually in the basement doing some exercises. My, my dad actually bought him some equipment down there. And I was in, in the living room watching some TV, and then I heard a knock on the door, and I was like, what could it have been? I wasn't expecting anything. But as I walked into the door, I saw from the window, Jake? I was like, rolled my eyes and thought, expecting the, the, the pleading of being coming back. But I, I didn't open the door for once, luckily though. I told him, Jake, what are you doing here? He told through the other side that he wanted to talk. And for once, he was actually calm. That was the first time I'd seen like that in in a quite a while, actually. And I told him, leave me alone, Jake. I'm not coming back to be with you, no matter how many times you plead and ask me. So stay away from me. And I even had the police on you already. He told me that he knew that. And that's the reason why he wanted to have a talk. And I told him, no, I'm done. So back off, leave our property, or I will immediately call the cops on you. That made him furious, but you will regret this, he said. And that happened around in late November of 2017. I didn't see him for the rest of, the, of that year until like early next year of 2018. I just mentioned this, I did tell my parents and Phil about Jake came back, but they were proud of me how my how I handle it. But they should probably told me to have at least my brother with me next time if something would happen. Well, I can say it's a scared moment. But like I said, I didn't see Jake the rest of that of 2017 until like the next year of 2018. I know that it was probably for the best I thought that now he's gonna be out of my life. Because from what I heard from Miranda that Jake moved out from the apartment and moved to somewhere else. And he still owned his company or his workshop. But despite that, I found out that now he has another girlfriend around the same age as me. I was like, finally he is out of my life. He has some a new girl that he can bother. Even though I felt a bit guilty not to have reached out to his new girlfriend to, to warn her how such behavior he had. And though at first I didn't even know exactly what type of behavior he had or what her name were. So even when I did some digging, I couldn't find because he had blocked me so I couldn't see if who his, who his new friends are or anything. But thanks to Miranda, she managed to track down who he was dating. And I'm not to be mentioned her name just for privacy since she is innocent like myself. So me and Miranda, we managed to track her down and met up in public and told her about Jake. And she told us that she had already started seeing this kind of behavior. And at first she first believed that maybe it was, he was just insecure. Then I told her that I was Jake's previous ex-girlfriend and how he had stalked me last year for weeks. And how he threatened to kill me, my parents, my brother, and even to stab my best friend. That horrified her and she decided perhaps it was not even the best thing. But I asked her if she lived with him. She said no, thank for that. She literally called Jake at the same moment and told him that she doesn't want to be with him anymore, even though they only have been together for only a couple of months, for at least by two months as it, at that point. He was asking her why he suddenly she wanted to break up with him. Because she told him how she found out about his previous stalking, threatened to kill his last ex. He denies that anything like that ever happened because and he told him, told her on the phone that I was the crazy ex, and that was he that he was innocent. In fact, before she even called him, I did show her some of the sort of my conversation with Jake and some of the photos of the how the threat mails that he sent me and all that. And she told him. Then he changed his tone and his behavior and told her, accusing me for ruining his relationship with 
his new girlfriend. I told on the phone, on the speaker, Jake, you are the one who has some, some issues, not her. So after that, she hang up the phone, called and blocked the number, and told us things that we had saved probably not only her from a long-term torture or anything. Luckily for her parents, was informed, and, well, they had no what to be warned since they were actually end up still moving out of town to a different state. And his newest ex was going with her family, so, but we actually are still friends to this day on social media. Just to be saying that. And anyways, Jake was furious, and he literally showed up to my parents' home when I was just home with Phil and my dad, and he said, how dare you to ruin my relationship with my new girlfriend? I told him, called me by around the door, Jake, I only made her a favor. I didn't want to, s I saved her from, from your dangerous behavior, like execution, uh, execution. How you've been accusing me from being she, I probably you would do the same thing to her. No, 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 no. I loved her. I loved you. But you left me. You broke my heart. Jake, no matter how much you're pleading or trying to act as an innocent, you are not innocent. You are a complete psychopath monster and a complete psycho liar. And that freaked him out. And in fact, I heard this click. If you don't open the door, I will shoot you through the door with my handgun. I was didn't believe him, but that click actually reminded me of a, a handgun's sound of a trigger, or if the the safety. I know sure if I should have to mention this because I know that, because my dad has has um, been hunting in his youth and he had a shotgun in home, I actually back off from the door and I told my dad about it and he grabbed his shotgun and opened the door and pointing it right in Jake's face and he's like, do you feel lucky? Do you? Punk. As he said with a grin, but Jake didn't seem to face. Then he actually shot my dad in the stomach with his firearm. It made my dad almost class, but he managed to point a gun and shoot right in the air, just missing Jake's head with a few inches. And Jake didn't face. He once again tried to shoot, but luckily for my brother, who was actually in the garage at the time, he heard this and tackled Jake to the ground and hold him down. My mom was on the phone with the 911 already after that shot. Well, let's see what happened, that the police are right, and they arrested Jake. He claimed that he only did a self-defense, because he claimed that my dad shot first against him. But, we told him we had security cameras pointing at the front door that could be viewed. And they did. And they found that what he told the police was a lie. They told him that, but he still stand, stood for his meaning. His testimony. Long story short, he ended up in arrested, and we had him straining order against him. And my dad, well, he was taken to hospital for surgery, and uh, and no, he didn't die. He he managed to pull through, and likely it wasn't that serious injury. But Jake ended up in a trial, and he was found guilty for murder, attempt of murder, stalking, and attempt. Uh, threat of murder and some people and uh, he even had my testimony and included the pre previous evidence that he had done and he ended up in jail for for life uh, he ended up in prison for life without possibility of parole luckily and uh, well I was ha at least happy that he was out of my life sometime after all this I actually met another guy don't worry, I know him perfect person uh, personally. He's a friend from high school, and his name is Victor. We actually started dating shortly after this, when I was around still 18, and now, as a 24-year-old, he is, well, 
the same age. <laughs> and in fact, we are engaged and hope we're expected to get married sometimes in the summer of 2024, 2023. And I'm just happy that I have met someone because he is opposite from Jake. So Jake, even though this is no chance for you to getting out, stay away from me because I will defend myself. Thank you.